In terms of fracking, people are a bit scared, aren't they, I think? Because I think it's maybe the, the action itself more than the reality of it all. Well, I think a small number of people mm. are very scared, and they're the same people who get wound up and scared by every single environmental scare story you see mm. in the media. So fracking was the perfect storm in the last decade because it's happening beneath your feet. You can't see what's mm. going on. It's about the earth shaking. Chemicals, chemicals are always used as a pejorative yeah. rather than the thing that's actually responsible for the progress we've seen in humanity for the last century. Mm. And these things all came together and it created that environment where the politicians started believing, not necessarily the detail of what the environmental NGOs were saying, but that it would be not more trouble than it was worth for them to progress with fracking. Mm. And that's what's led to this situation where we're sitting on these vast reserves yeah. of oil and gas in the middle of an energy crisis. Yeah. It's like dynamiting a gold mine during a gold rush is one way yeah. of putting it. Exactly, exactly. That. And it becomes increasingly more difficult to justify. When you see, you know, you know, Edna in Milton Keynes or whatever, who can't turn a heating on, she can't afford to... It becomes increasingly hard to justify not using what's right beneath our feet. Well, it's actually happened today. There were three applications for different types of onshore drilling that were put to the community secretary, Michael Gove. And he's refused two of them and allowed one of them. And the one he's allowed is the conventional gas drilling, as it just comes up mm. rather than needing to frack. Mm. And he's refused the two fracking ones. And some of these have been delayed for three to four years. So this is not a serious way of tackling an energy mm. crisis. This is just at the planning stage for exploration. This is even before you start getting the stuff out of the ground in quantity. Some mm. of the reasons given for refusing the applications or delaying them, it would cause a loss of amenity to a gypsy camp. Right. It would be inconvenient for a wedding planning company. Right. Mm -hmm. A fence is well, in so, the wrong so, place. So, so, yeah, you can't say that. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and on that point then, I mean, the government throughout the last two years has spoken a lot about following the science, haven't they? That's how they've positioned themselves, is how they approach policy. They follow the science. You, are you saying when it comes to fracking and lifting the ban on fracking, they're not following the science at all? Actually, it's very politically mm. motivated. Mm. Of course it's political. I mean, when people say follow the science, they usually try to imply that science is a matter of absolute truth versus easily falsifiable premises. It's about risk management. And the risks of fracking are known, quantifiable, and can be mitigated. So you can manage operations in a way that reduces the risk of anything leaking into the environment. And that's what they have to do anyway because of the regulatory environment. You can make sure when planning applications go through that you are sensitive to local needs. But it's not supposed to be an absolute. You can't ever say to people, we're going to do something in your local area and it'll be completely convenient, you'll love it and it'll be all great. What planning needs to do is encourage development in a, in a responsible way. And it's not doing that at the moment.